Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Ham Nation, episode number 36, February 21st, 2012. How to connect an audio mixer to your transmitter. Good night, everybody. <laughs> it's Bob Howell saying greetings. How are you? We're uh, having way too much fun here in the good old Radio Shack tonight. And uh, don't miss the rest of the show because George has some really cool audio things. And we're going to show you how to hook up your transceiver to a mixer, operate it, and have some great audio from just about every radio out there. We're going to do that in the second half. So uh, take note, there's something coming. But we have some fun people here tonight. First of all, Leo, hi, how are you? Nice hey. to see you. Hey, K9EID, W6TWT. Hey. You got it. You got it. I understand the guys are going to come and pay you a visit. There's some new D-Star stuff, and they're going to tune I you up. I saw that. Yeah, so we got a, I get a, I, I get an official visit from the mm -hmm. ARRL. <laughs> they come to reprogram my radios. Special treatment. <laughs> oh, Bill's a great guy, Bill, and he's yeah. right there local, so he's going to come That's and wonderful. get you all tuned up, and that'll be good. And what's happening in Costa Mesa other than uh, it's warm? We are here in Costa Mesa. Julian has a fantastic little motor he's going to show to all hams that you can make out of a double-A battery. And everything is good. All right. Good deal. Nice to see you, Gordon. Hey, I had a real special thing happen. And before we get started tonight, I want to play it for you because i tuning around Sunday. Well, I was on the Collins net Sunday. And right below them, as I uh, signed out of the net, I heard this special event station, and it was coming from the Phoenix area, and it was Barry Goldwater's station K7UGA. And uh, let's play a little of it. I'll let you hear what was going on Sunday. Here it comes from old Bill. Yeah, K9EID, nice signal, 5-9. Yeah, okay, very, very fine, Bob. Yeah, my home call is Kilo 7 Bravo Hotel, Mike. This is Kilo 7 United Golf Alpha, and we're the special event station on the air uh, celebrating the Arizona Centennial. We have over 30 operators that have operated K7 UGA from their home stations over the course of the uh, Centennial Week. Uh, Arizona Centennial was uh, February 14th, 100 years old. And uh, we're also celebrating by using the the, uh, the call of our great late Senator Barry Goldwater, QSL. No, Bob, uh, Barry, uh, Barry's house was sold. His family uh, sold the house, and, of course, all of the antennas came down. And uh, actually, the house was completely or almost 90% demolished in another home was uh, placed on top of it. Uh, just They just kept the foundation. So there's a new house up on top there with no antennas, unfortunately. Uh, go ahead. Oh, that, oh, that's sad. Well, I know that was a great uh, great thing back during the Vietnam War. He kept it on the air and uh, helped a lot of the servicemen communicate with their families over here. Thanks for doing that. It's good to hear you. And we'll, uh, we'll look forward to uh, many more uh, contacts with this memorial station throughout the years. A K7 UGA. This is K9 EID. Okay, Bob. Thanks for the contact. And yeah, we figured that within with the seven years that Barry opened his station front phone patches, he ran pretty close to 20,000 phone patches uh, over the course of that seven years. Uh, of course, from uh, from Southeast Asia, keeping the boys uh, in contact with their families out there. 73 is Bob, and we'll see you in Visalia. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Greetings. K9EID is clear. 7-3. 20,000 contacts, Leo. Wow. Those were phone patches that 
that he would do. Uh, and I, I remember hearing them, and they were very emotional sometimes because they didn't have cell phones and a lot of times not even phone connections. Right. So Barry kept that station on the air 24-7, him and the clubs uh, around the Phoenix area. And uh, the, the, the guys over in Vietnam can talk to their wives and mothers and loved ones via amateur radio. That was really a cool thing that Barry did. No kidding. Put it, really putting his uh, his heart where his uh, heart was, I guess. But that's really Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. And one thing that we miss with Barry is that he was on the technology committee, and he always brought up all kinds of wonderful things that we need in this country, technology wise. But he was probably the only guy sitting in the in Washington that understood half of it and uh, did a lot for the uh, uh, for the country. Let's, so we uh, let's get more hands in the House and the Senate. What was yeah. his call sign? K7UGA. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. How, many time did you, how many times did you work him, Gordo? I bet you worked him some, didn't you? Uh, we did. He was big on 40 meters with that huge uh, log periodic antenna. We worked him numerous times, and I even worked aboard his boat getting his ham set all tuned in. Yeah, I knew that you had that going on. That's really great. And uh, sad to hear that they tore the house down and it's uh, it's gone. But his equipment is at some uh, one of the historical museums. They're trying to work something out. So that'd be really cool. We'll try to get one of those guys on sometime and talk to us about it. For, for Amanda's sake and all the young people listening, Barry Goldwater was a senator from Arizona who ran for president in 1964. Just so everybody, I mean, just so everybody, it's ancient history for Amanda, I know. That's right. And, and Leo, here, here's a person that probably wasn't born then, and we're very excited to have Amanda on the show. And she came up with a great idea. Amanda, how are you in a K, K1DDN? How are you doing? I'm doing good, Bob. Thank you. And uh, hello, George. Uh, Gordo and Leo, nice to be here tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, you, uh, what you're what you thinking about doing here for Ham Nation. Well, George came up with a great name, but I uh, had heard so many times from a lot of my net friends and such, if you're going to be on Bob's show again, you've got to tell him about you how this happened or how this happened. And I thought, well... Gosh, they're going to get bored with me, but they would really love to hear your stories, and I would really love to tell them. So, uh, George came up with the name Ham Tales, and <laughs> I think now we're going to have it every week, and I'm really excited about it. That's great. And they can send you an email and uh, tell their story, uh, embarrassing or proud or whatever, any kind of great story that you'd like to share with all of us. Amanda is waiting. What do you have tonight for number uno? Well, I do have kind of a story, but it's a bit long. So I don't know if I should share it with you this week or not. Um, but I'll tell you what I'm looking for for next week. And I want everybody to write in and tell us uh, what was your most expensive mistake in ham radio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I want details, people. Come on. It's got to. We know you have some good stories out there. And uh, do they have they have that on uh, underneath my name, the email Thank address you. there? Ham Tales, T A. I L S really? Yes, really. <laughs> Not T A L E S, T A I L S. Like the tail on a ham. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Like the, okay, yeah. Gordon Gordon has one actually. I yeah. one. That's uh, at live.com. Ham tails at live.com. But you know nothing Amanda costs more than a dollar 98. So no mistake to be that costly. <laughs> that is, that's right. That's right. That's great. That's right. Except for gas. Yes. Okay, right. <laughs> The most expensive. Oh, my. Oh, my. But don't be embarrassed. We've all had them. And uh, uh, so let's uh, see what happens. Like, that'll be fun. Amanda, thanks for doing that. And Oh, um, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, we'll uh, we'll check in with you uh, next week and uh, see what you have. Uh, we got a short one already from Wisdom in our chat room. He says, 50 yards of concrete ought to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short story. Short. <laughs> with a sad ending. <laughs> oh boy okay okay <laughs> well we'll uh 
we'll be waiting to hear some of those and you'll have others too so thanks for joining us amanda you and jeff have a good time we'll see you on 40 meters on the net again and uh greetings to everybody there on your network he she has a wonderful network that uh she hosts uh, a couple of times a week and uh, on 40 meters and we're really uh really proud to have you guys with us so we'll carry on from there so thanks bob you guys have a great yeah. night thanks amanda All right. bye-bye Thanks. Nice to meet you. You too. The most expensive, Leo. Hmm. Mm, I haven't spent I a penny. Make... I haven't. I've been. I've been the the benefactor of all this generosity from ICOM and and, and all of you guys. Uh, I haven't made any mistakes. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, it'll come along somewhere. <laughs> Give me time. Give me time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if I'd have paid well, for that antenna, that would have been a mistake. Well, uh, that yeah, would happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I didn't. That I borrowed it. We got to work on that. See, <laughs> yeah. Bill's coming over. He's gonna do some things. That'll Bill be Helen, good. Though. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Great guys. Great guys. Uh, where's George? Is George in yet from Mississippi? Let's see how he's doing. He's probably in gross and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> How, How you doing, Gordo? Leo? Look at, look at that, that shirt! Studio. Wow! Holy smoly! Wow! Oh, George. you were looking at the shirt. I was looking at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to see one for the other. To be honest, it's a little bit of a blinding shirt. <laughs> wow! I, I can see tell Leo. you what my That's... most expensive mistake was: uh, getting a license. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right there. That's where it all started. <laughs> It all starts with a license. <laughs> yeah, but you see, Leo, that's the one of the true amateur radio shacks there is because you'll notice behind him is a crescent wrench and a soldering iron. Oh, yeah. What else do you need, huh? Right. Oh, yeah. He builds it all himself from scratch. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, hey, you know, we didn't get to talk about that sign behind you. Where'd you get that oh, on-air that. sign, yeah. Mr. George? Uh, I got this on over here from our friends at CheapPam.com, and we're going to be giving that away uh, two or three weeks from now. We'll come up with a special contest for that. It's a nice All little right. LED sign, though, made by Sandy's. That's nice. All right. And I guess well, you that- could set that up so that uh, whenever you keyed your mic, it went on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you just turn it on anytime you want to be uh, a little privacy in the ham shack. Exactly. <laughs> like all night. <laughs> I need so, to hang it out on the door. Yeah, exactly. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get a lot of, of questions through the week and uh, ask me what where my sign came from. That sign is back in the 60s made by High Gain, the antenna people. And they built a few little accessories, and that's one of them, and I've had it all these years. And it's uh, it's real special to me. But, uh, boy, that's nice to know that we now have a new one. There's a lot of them. BSW's got one of the originals that's uh, it's a stainless steel. And you see them in professional studios, especially NBC studios. Leo, remember that beautiful sign? <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go. This is, this is a one-of-a-kind sign. That uh, I got, actually, it's a radio station, KKSF in San Francisco, was an old hippie station in the 60s and uh, 70s, and uh, we took it over when I was working for uh, KLOK, Bill Weaver's uh, uh, station, and we moved into San Francisco, we took over their studio, the DJ played uh, one last uh, Inagata de Vida at noon, and uh, we flipped the switch and started with Neil Diamond, but I remember, he they left, and this sign was still there, and I said, can I take this with me, now it had a light. Uh, behind yeah. it and everything. But I said, can I take this with me? And I've had it ever since. And that is the real deal. That is no uh, nostalgia fake. That was from 1967 that's, right there. That's cool. Isn't that awesome? Right. right on the air, it says. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, let's see what George has got. See how much of his uh, smoke and solder we can get. We had a little defugality last week. So, uh, George, what what are you going to do for us? Let's see what you got cooking. Well, we're going to pick back up where we left off last week, and, and maybe this time you can actually hear the audio that goes with this audio segment. So, Alex, if you've got the uh, tape there, let's roll it. <laughs> so you just bought a new microphone. You unbox it, and it looks great. Surely you will sound like a radio god now. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Then you turn it around and look at the connector on the end. Oh, no. It's got three connections. 
and your radio only has two. You think, which two do I use? And after a little while, you've tried all the connections, two at a time. You hear static, noise, and hum. But you never hear any audio. That's because you're connecting a balanced microphone to an unbalanced input. Fear not, there's a correct way to do this, but let's discuss the difference between the two first. An unbalanced circuit has one signal lead and a ground. The ground lead is the shield, and the center conductor is the signal lead. A balanced circuit has two leads and a ground. One signal lead is connected to the plus terminal of the source, and the other is connected to the minus. The ground lead is connected to the shield, of course. Electrical signals must have a complete path. To illustrate this, a battery has two terminals, but both must be connected to the load before current will flow. It's the same for an audio signal. For an unbalanced circuit, audio from one side of the microphone element is sent to a radio over the center conductor. To complete the circuit, the other side of the microphone element is connected to the ground lead. Since an electrical signal must have a complete path to be transferred, audio travels down both of these leads. In a balanced circuit, the positive half of the signal from one side of the microphone element is sent down one center conductor to the equipment, and the negative half of the signal, which is 180 degrees out of phase from the first, is connected to the other center conductor. The ground lead merely connects the ground of the microphone case to the ground of the equipment. No microphone signal is present on the ground. Now let's talk about noise and radio frequency interference, or RFI. For an unbalanced circuit, when noise is present in the vicinity of the cable, some is induced into both the shield and the center conductor. A mic signal is very low level and must be amplified in the radio by a preamp so the noise is amplified as well as the intended audio signal. For a balanced circuit, some noise is induced into the shield and both center conductors. Since the shield does not carry audio, that noise is not much of a factor. And since the audio is on two balanced conductors, which are out of phase with each other, when the noise arrives at the preamp, it's canceled. Obviously, a balanced signal is the best choice for keeping noise and RFI out of your microphone signal. So why don't our radios have balanced mic inputs? Well, this is mainly due to the cost and the fact that since our radios usually have a short mic cable, not as much noise is induced as would be on a longer cable. How can we connect a balanced microphone to an unbalanced mic input? Simple. If we're using an unbalanced cable, which has one center conductor, we connect the negative lead from the mic element to the shield and the positive lead to the center conductor. If we're using a balanced cable, which has two center conductors, we connect the negative lead to the shield at the unbalanced end of the cable. Now what if we want to use a mixer to feed the radio? We can use the connections just described to connect balanced to unbalanced, but we find that the audio is very distorted. That's because the line level signal from the mixer is way too hot for the radio's microphone input. If we turn down the level on the mixer so we don't overdrive the radio, we find that the mixer's VU meter reads very low, and we probably have some noise, namely hiss, on the transmit audio. We need to pad down the audio from the mixer to an acceptable level so it can operate in its sweet spot while not overloading the radio's mic input. Resistors can be used for this purpose to create a pad, but I prefer to use a potentiometer. This will work in many cases, but there's a possibility that you could have hum from a ground loop or RFI entering the radio. The best way to interface a mixer is to use a 600 to 600 ohm transformer to isolate the mixer from the radio and a pot to pad the audio to the appropriate level. When you do this, you'll only connect the shield at one end of the cable or else you might have a ground loop. However, if you've got a problem with RFI, you might have to connect the shield at both ends. So my rule of thumb is, 
If you're connecting a microphone, the level is so low that you must use the shield. Since the mic itself is not grounded, there shouldn't be a problem with ground loops. If you're connecting something at a line level, though, try it without the shield first. Also, you should connect the mixer's chassis to your station ground system. Most importantly, though, when combating RFI, do whatever works. Now here's a tip for ICOM radio owners. Instead of using a separate connector pin, ICOM rigs have phantom power for condenser microphones on the microphone audio lead. You'll need to block this DC voltage from reaching your dynamic microphone or outboard audio gear by placing a one microfarad capacitor in series with the lead. Failing to do this could lead to undesirable consequences. <laughs> Very important to use that capacitor in there if you've got phantom voltage coming back toward the microphone. And we had a question for uh, this week's contest uh, related to this segment, and we didn't have many answers until after the show actually posted since no one heard the segment last week. <laughs> There's a key and, part of asking a question is that people hear the question, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the question was, why would you put a uh, transformer on the microphone input of your ham rig? And we had a lot of uh, uh, guesses on that. Um, the winner was actually Steve Vaness, KJ5T. And he said that if you're using a mixer, you'd use a transformer to isolate the mix from the radio this will improve the audio and reduce the noise when using a mixer with your audio setup. Some guy said that you would uh, use a transformer when you're connecting your microphone to the rig. Probably don't need that. Probably only need the transformer if you've got some active electronics in the circuit there. And Steve is going to win our soldering kit courtesy of CheapHam.com. And for next week, we're going to give away a uh, book here, another one of these, Constructing HF Wire Antennas, from Jerry Busting, uh, KR7KZ. And, uh, Gordo, do you have a question for us, or do I need to make up one on the spot? <laughs> no, actually, I do have a question, and it deals with copper foil. And the question is, why would we use copper foil for grounding our rig as opposed to a big, heavy wire. Why is surface area important in grounding? And why wire has something very special that does not convey ground current? So that's the question. Why foil in mobile and mobile marine for grounding? Even my ham shack here has a lot of foil on the tail of the gear versus plain old heavy wire. That's the question, George. That's a very good question, Gordo. And if you looked at the uh, rear of my truck, you'd see that I've got a little piece of that copper strap coming down from the antenna, uh, actually grounding my mount to the body of the truck. So, uh, good question. And send your answers to Ham Nation Contest. That's not plural, just Ham Nation Contest at gmail.com. Yay. That's great. The, one thing we can. can uh, show we've had a couple of guys ask about this in the, in the chat room and people talk about it all the time here's how you do a transformer from the microphone element you take the microphone element and instead of just tying it into a jack especially if it's high impedance you put a transformer in between it's that simple now you can buy these and when you buy them you pay like 45 or 50 bucks for them which is, of course, balanced out, unbalanced in. But you can do that same thing with a transformer. What's inside there? A transformer. Hmm. And you just have to wire it up properly. And uh, that really helps because you get rid of the ground loop situation. And, George, I just happen to have this made up. You're talking about ICOM. We get so many questions about it because it confuses people so much. ICOM is the only radio that has phantom power. They're feeding 8 volts back down the mic line. And if you're trying to hook up a dynamic microphone, it won't work. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of problems happen. So there's how you do it. It's very simple. You just insert a capacitor in series with the, the mic lead. Uh, the shield stays the same. And that's how you decouple 
a radio that you're going to use, uh, an ICOM radio that you're going to use a dynamic mic, and there it is in the flesh. It's just a simple little capacitor in series with the mic lead. And if you do that, you're okay. But you cannot use a dynamic microphone with a phantom power unless you do that on an ICOM or you're going to be uh, uh, in trouble. So you don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. That's very and uh, Bob, I have something on ICOM on the 9100. We discovered that there is no audio coming out for the headphones uh, unless you pick it off the front. And thanks to Bob Heil, he's come up with now the 9100 headset adapter that you simply put in between the headset. And now those ICOM radios that don't bring out audio on the Pen 5 or Pen 9, you've now got Eight. that taken care of. It's no soldering yeah. required. Thanks, Bob. Well, that it, it's really... <laughs> Really disgusting <laughs> that these manufacturers do this for decades. ICOM and um, a lot of the other radios, they have the headphone out coming through pin, in the ICOM case, pin 8. How cool. You plug in one plug and you get everything. One adapter, you get the headphone, you get the microphone, a push-to-talk line that comes out, and you can put your hand switch or your push-to-talk line of a, a foot switch. Uh, guess what? Uh, they come out with this fabulous 9100. Uh-uh, no headphone. It's empty. It's like, oh, come on. So now you have to take a lead and plug it into the headphone jack, a separate lead out of the mic connector. Works great, but it just confuses everybody. So you have to stay up on those things. And uh, one of the things you have to do, George, did, did you know you have to read instruction books when you buy a new radio? Did you know that? Well, you know, uh, I think I mentioned that a week or two ago when I had the instruction book in the trash can. But, yes, <laughs> don't throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> but it burned real good. Lots of smoke. Oh. Lots of fire. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Leo, do you re do you uh, you know you buying gadgets like three and four a day? Uh, <laughs> Who has time? I don't have to read these. No, you know. Uh, first of all, I think something should. Be this is different for a radio. But uh, for most of these gadgets, like cell phones, you shouldn't need to read a manual. But for like th that uh, ICOM, uh, what was it, the seventy eight hundred? That thing is this thick. So what I do is I try to use something. Without reading the manual, then I read the manual. <laughs> I know what questions yeah. to ask. Like, what's you this get do? in trouble first, yeah, and find exactly. out why you got in trouble. Is that what <laughs> exactly. this is good? Yeah, this is good. I think you have better questions yeah. once you've tried to use something. You kind of have a better idea of what you don't know, like everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey. Um, uh, Bob, uh, we've got something that requires uh, no manual, and um, uh, if we could drop it in now, it comes from Julian, who's sitting right here, but it's only a couple of minutes long, and folks, uh, if uh, Alex will roll the video, you don't need a manual for this. No manual need. For this experiment, you're going to need a very strong rare earth magnet like this one, an iron screw of some kind. And a power source which comes from a one and a half volt AA size battery. We're also going to need a small length of copper wire. Attach the screw to the flat end of the magnet and center it as best you can, like this. The more centered and balanced the screw is on the magnet, the better. Next, you hang the screw and the magnet from the positive end of the battery. When you hang the screw and the magnet from the positive end, there's very little friction. Now you touch one end of the wire to the negative battery terminal, hold it there. And this is where the magic begins. Touch the other end of the wire to the magnet. Instantly, you created a homopolar motor. Just out of a wire, a battery, a magnet, and a screw. Because of the very small amount of friction at the very top of the screw at touching the battery, this motor will spin for a very, very long time. 
<laughs> there is a ton of really complicated science which explains exactly what's going on here. But thankfully, we don't have to understand that science in order to have some fun with this. Here are a couple of other variations on this theme. In this one, the wire itself is spinning around the battery. In this variation, I created a sort of cage out of wire. All the wires join at the top and touch the positive electrode of the battery and the bottom end of the wires touch the magnet. And now it's time for you to try. That is neat. All right. Wow. And uh, here it is, live and direct. As you can see, spinning around like crazy. All right. That's great. So there is uh, actually one correction on that video I do have to make, and that's... Uh, Hannah Lee, my uh, fiance, she actually passed her technician class exam. Uh, when was that? Last Friday. Oh, right. And so uh, we are actually waiting for a call sign. So Yay. that'll be good. <laughs> All right. There you Thanks, go. And, uh, Julian. Well, actually, Bob, before we go, what we want to do is uh, we want to make this a little competition as well. Um, we would like people to make their own video and send me a link to n3jf at awrl.org. Again, n3jf at awrl.org. And if you win, excuse me, that's .net. I should should get net, that right. Net. .net. N3JF at net. And uh, send me a link to a video that you've created of your Homo Polo motor. And if you win, uh, we will send you a signed autographed copy of uh, Gordo's general class license uh, preparation materials. So uh, do that. We'll give you two weeks to do it. So two weeks from today, uh, we'll right. announce the winners and show the video maybe. Bob, back wow. to you. All right. That's what ham radio is all about is doing all this crazy stuff and uh, having fun doing it. And who knows where it's going to go from there. So uh, that's that's super. Thanks for doing that. Thanks very much for doing that. Um, uh, let's go over and see what's going on with Leo. He's Wait a minute. Reading. No, I'm busy. I have to read this ICOM manual. It's uh... Yeah, <laughs> he's reading his manual. <laughs> that, there's a lot in here. Wow. Look at there's maps. This thing is so complicated. There's it's a gatefold with, <laughs> with circuit diagrams on it. My goodness, Leo, that oh. that's just a map to the ICOM office, so we can go ask him a question. <laughs> well, if I uh, what do you, if I take a little soldering iron to this uh, junction here, I think I should have it all yeah perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. That was the most expensive mistake I ever made. Right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Hey, no. These guys are great. great. It is. I mean, talk about documenting it. When you include schematics in your manual, uh, that's what's so cool about this hobby is you are treated like an intelligent person. <laughs> Which we are. Oh, yes. Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, a oh, wise one. <laughs> Oh, golly. That's great. Isn't that amazing? Look at well, that. we want to check in with Robert and get some news, and then we're going to head up and uh, see if Cheryl's got some things going on. But first, let's see what the news of the day is in amateur radio, and that's going to give me time to set up my 7,000 and come back and show you how to hook it all up to your mixer. So, Robert Sudock, it's all yours. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1801, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Tuesday, February 21st, 2012. The 2012 World Radio Communications Conference has ended with the approval of a new 600-meter medium-wave secondary allocation from 472 to 479 kilohertz. As a secondary user, Amateur radio shares spectrum with the primary user in all ITU regions, and that would be the Maritime Mobile Service. Power is limited to 5 watts ERP, except for stations within 800 kilometers of the borders of the former Soviet bloc nations and the Arab states. There, power is only 1 watt ERP. Now, each nation's communications authority must authorize use of the band by their amateurs, an area of spectrum that we've not had access to 
since the earliest days of radio regulation. Only three hours after launch from Katy, Texas, communications with a high-altitude balloon headed for Najing, China, was lost. BLT-28 transmitting call sign KT-5TK-11 on APRS went silent at 45,700 feet over the Gulf of Mexico, about 110 miles south of Holly Beach, Louisiana. There is hope that BLT-28 may have actually crossed the Atlantic Ocean sometime Monday morning, February 13th, but that is yet to be confirmed. If the APRS transponder does return to life, it should be transmitting on 144.800 MHz and will eventually appear on various worldwide APRS tracking websites such as APRS.fi. Now I wonder what would have happened if they had launched just a few miles north. After more than a decade, the Amateur Radio Newsline's web host, Ron Becker, KJ6SWB, and owner of Allen Labs, has closed this part of his business. So we we'll want to take this opportunity to thank Ron for his generosity and assistance to the Amateur Radio Newsline. Our new home is squarespace.com. Come check it out. Let us know what you think. And we also want to recognize the efforts of those who have and will continue to maintain the site for everyone's use and enjoyment. They are Dale Carey, WD0AKO, and Kevin Trotman, N5PRE. They work anonymously behind the scenes, and we wanted to take this opportunity to recognize them and thank them for their hard work. Next week, we hope to have some time to feature another classic microphone. But for now, that's all from the Amateur Radio News Line, your independent source of amateur radio news brought to you each week without interruption for nearly 35 years at www.arnewsline.org. I'm Robert Sudock, WB6FDF73, and we'll see you next time on Ham Nation. Good one, Robert. Great. Thank you very much for doing that. Thanks to Bill Pasternak and all the staff at Newsline for doing this each week. It's uh, very useful for everybody to understand what's going on in the news around our hobby. So let's head up north. Cheryl, how are you doing? And uh, what's happening for you in the chat room tonight? Everybody awake and live and having fun? Oh, they are. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Cheryl. Cheryl and hi, Bob. Good evening to you, and good evening to Leo, and good evening to, to Gordon and George. And also, I just want to welcome Amanda aboard there, K1DD, and a warm welcome to you. Yes, we have some questions here tonight in the chat. Um, some are for you, Bob, if you want. Uh, I can start with those. It's okay. Um, let's, let's hear them. What is the level meter under your on-air um, show sign there that you've got? That comes from Mike Duro, KO6NM. His company is called the Duro Broadcast Meter. They, they, that meter is in just about every radio station across the country. It's a, a very high quality, calibrated meter for for watching your levels. And uh, I use it here when I test microphones. Uh, uh, through many different sources and stuff, but here I just have it hooked up to the monitor uh, uh, line on the mixer just to show you what's going on, but uh, I'm in the way of it now, ain't I? <laughs> but it's a wonderful piece, and I, I recommend it highly for everybody. Uh, uh, you can get it through BSW, so uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, I have one too, as you know, uh, Bob, because Mike very kindly uh, donated one to our uh, Radio Shack. He's the guy also who did that amazing refurb of the uh, Collins AM transmitter. That we oh, had. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's quite a fella. Yeah. Well, that meter is really useful in uh, I love so it. many ways. Best meter ever. And, you know, a lot of times people uh, in the old days would say, oh, no, you have to have a ballistic analog meter with a, you know, a needle and everything. And that is every bit as accurate and it's digital. It's quite impressive, really. Yeah, it is. It is. What else you got, Cheryl? Hi, Leo. How are you tonight? <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. 
Hey, um, they also wanted to ask about if how do you transmit with a headset and a microphone uh, set? Is there a push to talk button connected to the adapter for the headset or uh, radio mic jack? Um, they wanted to know how that works, Bob. If you could elaborate on that one. We're I'm all set up. We're going to answer that in just a little bit when we hook it all up. So uh, stand oh, very by. Very good. It's all hooked. And up. what microphone are you actually using tonight? Was a question that was on your mind. R781. It's a uh, Balanced output microphone uh, based on our PR40, which is a big, wide broadcast response. But I rolled off a little bit of the low end so it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't get quite so tubby and bassy on ham radio. Uh, a lot of times you can get in trouble with too much low end and start uh, splattering your neighbors and so on around your frequency. And the 781 is great. It still has that wonderful articulation. Wonderful. Sounds good, too. Got a couple questions for George, if he uh, can hear me here. Hi, George. Are you there? Hey, Cheryl. Hey, is that an MFJ shirt? That's what the chat room wanted to know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not really, but uh, it's. I don't even know what brand of shirt this is. My mother got this for me after she saw the show. I had to show. pull your leg there a little bit. And um, they wanted to know where to buy the magnets from, if you could elaborate and tell us a little bit about that, George. Well, uh, Julian had the magnets, but I think you can find some of those maybe even at Radio Shack. I, I think they have a small assortment of them. And are they regular? Scientific. Are they regular magnets, or are they rare earth magnets, or what type? I uh, wasn't really paying attention. What type of magnet was Julian using there? Oh, um, Julian says they're rare earth magnets, and you get it at um, amazingmagnets.com. Is that right, Julian? Right. Amazingmagnets.com. So the answer is amazingmagnets.com. Thank you for that, um, Gordo. Appreciate it. Um, also, um, what mic is a good mic for the ICOM uh, IC7000, Bob? That was one of the other questions I have for you tonight. We'll get into that in a minute. Okay. Everything's we're still going to hold 000. for that then so far, right? Yeah, we're okay. Well, it's all going to happen over here. <laughs> So maybe we should jump into that real quick. Can you go back and uh, see what else we can answer uh, in just a little bit? But we're going to have fun here. First of all, check this out, Leo. You ready for this? Recognize that? Wait, mm -hmm. wait, I'm looking, let me look closer. That's an iPad, but on the iPad, you've got a Collins transmitter. <laughs> oh, no. What is that? I don't know what that is. I have a pink noise generator. Oh, <laughs> it's working, Bob. It's working. <laughs> yes. Does it have a sweep? I want to sweep. There's all kinds of. It'll sweep if you want to sweep want things, to sweep. and you can do Look it manually, that. or that you can awesome. let it do it on its own. Holy Isn't cow! That cool? There's a lot of different tools you can use. Uh, so it's, it's a no, it's a noise generating app. Yep. Then you have a a, a decibel meter for a oh, measuring. Wow. Uh, levels now is it's the really mic cool. accurate I enough? I probably not the built-in mic, but there are companies that make. In fact, we saw one at the MacWorld yep. Expo that make yep. third-party, uh, uh, you know, mics yep. that are designed for sound pressure measurements. They're yeah, brilliant. and it really works nice. I'm, wow, I'm, I I love it, and that it, uh, it works so well. What's so? But, what's uh, the name? It's called uh, what is it? Audio Tool. Is Audio what it's Tool. Called. There's another one called Sonic Burn. I've been called Audio Tool, but I think you're, that's something different. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> and it gives you all kinds of uh, information about it. It's, it's great, and I, I love it. It's, it's super. Do you use but, that uh, to test your mics, things like that? Yes, I do. I, well, there again, that with the, uh, with the Duro meter and, and then all kinds of other things that we use here, too. Uh, but um, these things are really helpful, and I, I use them a lot. So I just uh, looked it up. It's a buck ninety nine from Performance yeah, Audio. Wow. Right. That is a yeah. great deal. Wow. It, it's really great, and I, uh, I, I use it a lot. But uh, what we're going to do here, I want to I do several different things. But first off, we're going to show everyone how to hook up a mixer to a transceiver. And I, I chose the, the transceiver of the 7000. And the reason I did that is because the 7000 is a great little radio. This thing is fantastic. There's only one problem. It has a little bit of difficulty 
trying to get good audio through it. I don't know what the problem is, but uh, they try working on the microphone and all that. But let me show you how to get really good audio through it. First of all, a headset is almost impossible. So that's why we worked with ICOM to develop a headset. Dr. Inouye says you need to build a product for us that works on our 706 and of course it's uh, 7000 and we came up with the traveler and it's really great it's got an inline push to talk switch so you can control the transmitter and then what the other problem is is just what gordo said they don't feed audio through the connector anymore so we have one for the speaker in the back that you can plug in here for your headset, and then you plug this into the microphone input, and it really plays. This is a great piece. So that's all you have to do to plug the microphone and to push the talk in. Then you can plug in to the regular. It turns that into an 8-pin plug. You can plug either, and I love this. This is a wonderful piece. It solves all the ICOM problems. It's the ICM. It's, it's a a very high quality electorate. And I did this working with the ICOM people some years ago to develop this, this element and it plugs right in and away you go. That's one way to do it, but we don't stop there. Here's what you need to really make that thing come alive. Not to say that the ICM won't, but here's the way we do it. You take a mixer you, and, and I like to use the little Behringer because they're very inexpensive. And you can, you can buy some of these for 50 bucks. Uh, and this gets you a lot of performance. You plug a microphone into the input. And here you can plug a balanced microphone into there. And you have three band EQ. Not you're going to use too much of the top end. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But the main trick is, is when you use this mixer you don't want to plug it into the input of microphone you're going to overdrive it and here's why here's the front end of most transmitters today and this is a standard standard setup of all radios they have a 60 db preamplifier usually you plug your microphone into there because uh, low-level dynamics need some gain, and so you have microphone gain around that one. But then in the second stage, they have an input directly into it. So you can plug a mixer because that mixer is going to have about a volt, volt and a half coming out of it. Well, you pretty much can't put it into a, a, a microphone input. You cannot do that. Well, you can, but you're going to overdrive it a little bit. So you plug it into the line input. Where do you find the line input? You find it in the accessory plug. Now, the other thing about this while I'm showing you this, that front end also has a third division. That's equalization, treble and bass. And that makes up the front end of most transceivers today. Where do you find that plug? You find that plug in the back. Now, Leo, you know when you got your 7800, yeah. there was a whole bunch of goodies in these little bags. Yeah. And most people just kind of throw them away because, man, those are funny-looking little plugs. Well, sure yes, they're them somewhere. Plugs. There must be there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're in there. <laughs> they're there. They're here somewhere. What are they, Bob? And this one has a lot of pins in it. Yeah. And what we have to do is pick out the pins on the schematic that you're looking for. And that's uh, also there for the 7,000, all of them. Pin 11 and pin 2. 2 is a ground. 11 is the audio input. Pin 12 is the audio output. But right now we have brought out pins 2 and 11 and put them into a regular phone jack. So we plug that into our accessory plug in the back. And it's so simple. Once you get this all set up, just plug her in. There we go. And then we have audio coming straight out of the transmitter. Here, I'll show you where that plug is. It's right, right there, that little guy right there. 
Now, there's a lot of pins in there, and it does a lot of other things for PSK, uh, data stuff. But we want to pick up, out of that accessory, we want to pick up just the audio. So once you have that all plugged in, ready to go, you plug that into the output of the Behringer or whatever mixer. And so the output of that mixer is going to drive, remember I said that line input, that's what's in the back. That's not a microphone input. A lot of guys think, oh, I'll plug my mic in the back. No, you can't do that. You're 60 dB short. So you have to plug a microphone into the front. Here we're going to come out of the mixer. We're going to plug a microphone into the front end and away you go. So this allows you to have equalization, lots of nice drive, and you can use a very high quality microphone into the balanced input. One other situation that you have to be careful, people see these mixers and they say, oh, there's a phone jack there. I'll plug it in there. No, it's, that's an unbalanced input, but it's also about 30 dB down. So you lose a lot of gain going into an unbalanced input in a mixer. You want to go into the balanced line input. And uh, George showed you how to do that a while ago. It's very simple. Or better yet, get a microphone that is balanced line. Now, here's where it really comes into play. When, when we do this, why, why are we putting all this work into a mixer in the front end and so on? The reason that we want to do that is to pick up some equalization. And it's so important. And in many radios, like the smaller ones especially, they don't have any EQ. And it's, it's really kind of sad because you need some form of equalization so you can balance your audio properly. And boy, when you do that, oh my. Let me let you hear what happens when we do some of the neat little things that, that we, can, uh, we can do with equalization. We're going to go back to that generator. Let's go to the noise generator. Turn it on. Can you hear that okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it too loud? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too loud? What? Uh-uh. Right. What? <laughs> oh, it's just right. It's just right. That's, that's okay. how I like my white noise, right there. Okay. Fine. Here yeah. we are. Here we are. Is that from the iPad app? Yes. That's awesome. What I'm going to do, I'm only adjusting... The base control. This equalizer has three particular knobs, bass, mid, and treble. And when I adjust that low, it's at 80 hertz, if you see. Okay, so now when we do this, we're only affecting 80 hertz. I think you will probably hear that through the internet. I hope so. I'm sure everybody who's listening knows this, but white noise is equal along all the frequencies, right? It's all of the frequencies at the same time, same, time. same level. Same level. Now, as I, I can cut 80 cycles, I can plus 80 cycles. So you can hear it now, notch. Co- I'm sorry? You can hear that notch. Yes. Now, here we go. Here comes the important one. Not that that one isn't. We've got this set up. The second one is 1K. Now listen to what happens here. It's kind of a honky sound. Hear that? Yeah. And so what you need to do is find an equalizer that's got a parametric mid in it, or better yet, a parametric. You can change that frequency, and if you can, boost it up to 2K. And we learned this from AT&T's Bell Labs years ago. Now watch what happens when I equalize 2K. Right in the brilliant part of where the voice region is. You can hear that with the, with the noise generator real easy, I think. There I notched it, and there I can boost it. Why do I want to do that? I'll do it with my microphone. I'm going to roll off the low end. There's no low end. 80 cycles is gone. Now we're going to boost that low end. We can get really crazy if we want to. But I'm going to make that without any boost. And here comes the mid-range. And the mid-range is going to be at 1K. 
And you see how honky it got. It gets honky sounding. That isn't where I want to see it. I want to see it at 2K. Now watch what happens when I equalize 2,000 cycles. It becomes very articulate. And that's what we're looking for. Articulation. And so many guys, when they hook up mixers and all this stuff, they want to, they want to be big and boomy. But when they do that, they forget to bring up the mid-range. So they sound like this. They got a lot of low end and they got a honky mids. And you don't want to do that. You want to take it out a little bit and what I call feather it. You want to balance it. Balance is so important. Now, there's, <clears throat> there's a very nice, pretty balanced sound. We're doing all of that <clears throat> with the mixer. And it, it's important, so important <clears throat> that you can do this with your transmitters. Now, many transmitters have that built in. All the ICOMs have shelving EQ, which it's fixed, but at least you have bass and treble, and it's moved up to about 2.5K. Uh, basically, uh, uh, all of them have that, uh, with exception of the 7000 and the 7200. <clears throat> but then you go to Yesu, they have parametric EQ. So instead of just having a, a fixed frequency, <clears throat> you can change that, as I did here. It's a parametric you can change the parameters. So if you're if you're out looking for a mixer, look for one that's got some parametric mids that you can change the frequency, especially of the mid range. And uh, this Elisa that I have has that, and so do a lot of the Behringers and so on. But now you have really have a mixer that plays big time for you. And uh, we'll go back one more time and and let you hear this. It's it's really cool. I'll bring up the, the lows. There, I notched it. Now I'm going to boost it. Now here comes the mids at 1K. And that honky sound. Let's move it out to 2K because it's as parametric. Now it's going to be sparkly. And that, and that, it'll affect your voice because the noise generators, they produce all of the frequencies at one time and it's the greatest tool that we use in setting up sound systems and we go out to do a concert with Joe Walsh or Peter Frampton or any of these guys uh, that's what we do you we take a generator and we sweep the system to find out how it sounds in the hall and we can listen to then we also can measure it with measuring equipment to see if the response is where we need it so it, it's really a great tool but those are some of the very intricate things that it takes, and it's very simple. You go into the accessory plug into the back of the radio. You come out of there and go into the mixer, and uh, you've got audio that you can equalize. You can also remember on that same accessory plug, you got audio out, right out of the product detector, bypassing all of the audio in the transceiver. That's the game here. We want to get rid of all that audio. We want to use professional audio. You come out of that pin 12 and put it in another channel because there's a pan pot. And pan pots are really cool. What happens with a pan pot control is we can pan it left or pan it right. And this is really super stuff. I, in my own station here, the pan pot is hard left. And when I pan it hard left, it will only come out of the left side. So I take the left out, and that's what I drive the line input of the transmitter. And for receive, I take the pan pot to the second channel and hard I, I put it hard right, so it now comes out only, only the right output. And I drive one of these beautiful new, you can see a white one up here. That It's a prototype they built for me. That is a prototype of a new JBL speaker. It's $200 for a pair of them with 100 watt amps in each one, powered studio monitors don't go looking at these little matching speakers uh no you go look at a studio monitor that's got uh, 100 watt power amps in them come out of that pin 12 or whatever your transceiver has and receiver has 
Drive that, oh baby, now you got something. You won't believe how much better things sound when you get some decent audio. So a lot of fun, good knowledgeable stuff that I hope you can uh, make some uh, some use of. And uh, if you have any questions, email me, call me. I'm always there to help you, and we'll do some more here on the show. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting things to do. So, Leo, did you get your uh, pinouts figured out for your 7800 yet? Oh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I've got the soldering iron, and I think this should just <laughs> take me a few minutes. Um, what is flux? No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, next time you come out, Bob, you're going to do it. Okay, we will. I'm we no will. fool. <laughs> okay. I got a rule around here. Let Bob do it. <laughs> well, or Gordo. We, uh, Gordo counts too. Or George. No, no. I'll or let George. Bob or George do it. <laughs> Leo, thanks for joining us tonight. I the chat room is full of compliments that hey, Leo's there. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, yeah. it's fun to be here. Thank you guys for doing such a fun and, and and I think informative show. It's better and better every time I come here. It's uh, you've got <laughs> you've added now so many good features and I just love it. Well, we're we're just trying to make it fun, and we're trying to involve everybody. This isn't one show for one person. It's all of us, Ham Radio, putting this thing together. And uh, George and, and Gordo and I get so many emails, and, and we're able to answer them here on the show. How cool is that? Because uh, uh, we want to make this show informative and useful for everybody. And, and we try as hard as we can to remember that so much of it is a podcast that they're listening and just not always seeing the videos, but always fun to uh, watch the, uh, Come live. the videos yeah, too. Watch it live, though. It's always fun. Yeah. Do, do both. Download yeah. it. Watch it. Watch it several times. It's all good. Yeah, Actually, all you good. can learn by watching it over and over again. I, I'm going to have to watch your segment about five or six times, uh, Bob, because I had... <laughs> Missed it. I don't know what that. Uh, well, I know it goes pretty fast. But uh, what I have planned, I'm going to come back in a couple of weeks and do an, another different radio and do it again and, and try to try to show people how this is done and we'll we'll make it all happen. Real quick, uh, let's just, let's see uh, Cheryl back with us. Uh, see what you got in the chat room, real quick, Cheryl. Hi. Yeah, that was a great segment there, Bob. I really learned a lot myself. I'll have to watch it more than one time myself. It was really yep. a great job. Appreciate that. They want to know in the chat room what iPad app that you were using, Bob. Uh, it's called uh, Audio Tool. It, it Audio is from Tools, a company yeah. called Performance Audio. It's a dollar ninety nine. You know what I like? It's both iPhone and iPad. Mm -hmm. So you buy it once, and you can run it on both platforms. They have a metronome in it now. They just added that, and a decibel meter, uh, as you mentioned, as well as uh, noise generators and uh, and a lot more. Audio yeah. tool. Right. They say a must-have for every prof audio professional. And if Bob recommends it, I'm good with it. I, I have it in my phone, and it's really useful. I used great? to have to carry a whole bag of stuff around yeah. with me, and now we're uh, you know doing uh, uh, doing it with the iPhone. And, uh, we're I love off it that they're only next week. I love it that they're charging so little for it because you really, yeah. they could charge 40 bucks for this. It'd still oh, be a good absolutely. deal. Absolutely. Right? And you know, in the beginning, they did, Leo. There were a couple of these things up there that were ridiculous. Right. right. But uh, we're headed out of here uh, next week, be with Peter Frampton. He's out on tour playing his concert, the big concert that made his career, that double set album. He's playing it exactly as he did in 1976 with the talk wow. box and all that. So when, when, when you see him, Bob, would you do me a favor? Would you tell him, I want to hang you. Just tell him that. <laughs> tell him I said that. I, hey, he's using one of these things no, right no. here. Yeah. People this may not know this. I know this. You built the Frampton talk box that he played on that uh, best-selling uh, uh, album, Frampton Comes Alive. Yeah, but the rest of the history is really cool. It was Joe Walsh and I that figured it out. That's so awesome. Yep. And did we you see did Joe Walsh sitting right there in the front row at the Grammy Awards right next oh, to yeah. Paul McCartney? Was that not cool? Well, he played. He yeah. played. Great. He played in That's McCartney's band. Yep. Yeah. But so. uh, Joe and I figured this out. We had to do it for Rocky Mountain Way. And there's a whole history. Maybe some night I'll bring on the original one. 1939, another ham, Leo, Alvino Ray. Oh, wow. That played That's with the King name. family in 1939, yeah. took an old throat microphone, turned it backwards, and put it on his wife and put her behind a curtain <laughs> and called it his talking guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. 
Right. You, I, I think you told me the story that Penny Frampton, Peter's wife, was looking for a birthday gift. Was it birthday? Nope. Close. Christmas. Christmas gift for Peter. Yeah. And you, and you guys conspired, and probably that's got to be the best g- Christmas gift anybody ever gave Peter Frampton because yeah. it also gave him one of the best-selling albums of all time. I think it's yeah. so cool that he's performing. I've seen him perform that live. It is a great show. It's well worth well, seeing. He's doing the show just the way it was in oh, those days when I was out with him, and I'm yep. so excited. And uh, he'll be uh, playing it through the old talk box. So we're we're very excited about uh, being away. going to miss you guys next week. But, well, it was one or the other. That's the problems, but um, we're uh, we're going to make it happen. This this talk box is real special, Leo. Wow, Joe Walsh signed it. Look at that. <laughs> now the one cool. in the t- in the rock hall, Let's both see. of them signed it. It was serial number one that I built, and the Peter and Joe both built uh, both signed it, and it's in the rock hall. So, uh, you get by Cleveland, you'll be able to see that. And uh, hey, one last thing. Remember, go to our Facebook page. We're naming this. You got to pick out a name for this USB preamp, and this isn't like all the others. There's a ton of these out here, but they don't have equalization in them. I is put it, that is it going to be purple? It's going to be purple. This I one's think, more pink, isn't it? But it's really going to be purple. Yeah, I think you have yeah. to call it something like the 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 purple EQ eater or something. <laughs> One eyed. <laughs> what was that song? <laughs> yeah. One eyed purple people. Purple eater. people eater. There yeah. we go. <laughs> but we're having a contest and we're going to just, wow, well, just a naming thing. Alert. Go to Facebook. That's a great uh, idea. Facebook, Heil Sound Radio. And then. Uh, Heil. Gonna, so your Facebook page is Heil Sound Radio. We have two of them. We have Heil Sound, it's to Pro Side, and Heil Sound Radio, the ah, other one. Amateur radio. So it doesn't matter which one we do? No, uh-uh. All right, and uh, we're, we're getting all kinds of names. So I have, It's the hardest thing I do. I, I come up with all these crazy products, and the, the toughest thing is to name them. So I just liked you yeah. on Facebook. He's, oh, he's okay. wondering what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> I just liked you, Bob. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so now I can name it, huh? I can, uh, I can, yeah. I can contribute my, uh, my thoughts. All right. Absolutely. But, but Leo's not allowed to win, so. Annoying. Well... We don't the know. Anointing. We, uh, we don't the know anointing. what we're going to do yet, but we'll figure out something. We just gave two people a free trip to Cleveland. We had a contest. Uh, at <laughs> What's the second prize? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two, two free weeks in Cleveland. I'm sorry, I walked right into that. I, yeah, you walked well, right into that. They get to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and they get to go in the basement where all the oh, archives ooh, are. Now that is cool. Oh, yeah. And, of course, get to spend time in our our exhibit room as well as Les Paul and the Beatles and all of that. It's just what an honor to be in there. And uh, we're, we're just so excited. So we, we had a contest on Facebook, and uh, a couple from Upper State New York won it. So there now we go. Now, this looks in the, uh, on Facebook a little red. Is, that, is it red yeah, or is it purple? No, it's more purple. It's more purple than that. Okay. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It'll be about the color of that logo. I love but, it. uh, it's I got will, EQ will, in it and two band EQ, which has never been done. And I think without it, oh man, forget it. But, uh, we use it, uh, a lot. And, uh, in fact, I think maybe one next show, I'll just, I'll take this Elisa's out and I'll use it on, and you won't see any difference. It's amazing. Have you set a price? Do you know how much you're going to charge? Yeah, probably about 90 bucks. That's a good deal. Well, it's, it's gotta be. These <laughs> That's guys, a good deal. Been, these guys charging two and $300 yeah, for those yeah. things. They're out of their mind. Because uh, uh, the technology's there, you got to so get now, the name purple in there. And people may yeah, not know, but Bob wears purple high tops all the time. That's his color. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's a purple people cool. eater himself. They're very cool, very cool. That's because when I build equipment back in the late '60s for all these bands, the Who and the Dead and all that, I wanted the, you to know what kind of amplifier it was from the 20th right. row, and you can't read the label, so I painted them blue and purple. <laughs> So there's how it happens. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> there it is. The purple elephant. <laughs> Gordo's with us. <laughs> He's on board. <laughs> That's great. Oh, golly. Hey, Cheryl, what do you got real quick? Where we, uh, you know what I got? You know what I got here. I wanted to just quick show this thing um, that uh, was lent to us today from um, Rob Orr K9 RST from Rob Orr Productions to get our antenna up, Bob. All right, it's a big okay. shot. It's a big, big shot. shot unit. 
And it's by um, CherylTree.com, spelled S-H-E-R-R-I-L-L, tree.com. And it can go up to our 80 and 100 foot trees, and that's the difficulty. So you'll, we'll be on the air with the new an, the new mystery antenna from AI4 <laughs> Delta Quebec soon. I just wanted to show it to you. Isn't it great? That's <laughs> great. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I know JD and those guys are all coming out there. He and John and Phil, I can just see it now. So look out. They're putting up a new antenna for Cheryl. Uh, uh, we've been uh, bugging her about that, Leo. So she's going to get a new antenna put up. <laughs> all right. You can hear better. Okay, well, I think we're there. Gordo, you got things all under control that we can uh, head down the road and get on 40 meters? Yeah, everything's fine. We'll meet everybody on 7268 or thereabouts. I've got my uh, reel of LEDs that uh, Leo has approved of, and um, we'll see you soon. See you next week. Uh, Bill's going to be on seven, uh, 77, what is it, uh, 7.28, 7280. Uh, K5LN. So uh, look around. There'll be that. And, uh, 7268. Uh, 268. Yeah, I yeah. Missed. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that's and where Bill And 3847. And 3847 and 3050 for 75 meters. 3847 okay. and 3850. We'll be there. See you guys. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Okay, Leo, thanks for sticking around. And uh, George, nice to see you tonight. And Cheryl, thank you. Thanks to Amanda. And, uh, We'll make it all happen again here on Ham Nation. You want to you wanna pass the word about what we're doing here because so many people, they hear about, oh, wow, you guys are having a ham radio show. Well, thanks to Leo to give us the bandwidth and all of that. And uh, thanks to our friend WB6ACU that wrote Leo. and plays the theme. So a whole bunch of hams putting this thing together. As we get out of here and head for 40 meters, 75, 73, everybody, best regards, and Joe's going to play us out. Bye-bye for now. From K9EID. Woo! Love that song. <laughs>